Okay, one of my favourite things to do is to prune apple trees in the winter. That's not one of my favourite things to do. Okay, a really enjoyable job in the winter is pruning my apple trees and my pear trees. I think this is a really enjoyable job. I like to look on it as a few years project. Don't try and do everything in one go. Try and never take off more than a third in one go as well, otherwise you just encourage loads of growth. First thing you gotta do is look for dead, diseased, and damaged, the three Ds. Um, so look for those. This is a quite a young tree, so it's quite a good example. There's nothing dead, diseased, or damaged there. Then we can look over for crossing over branches and things like that. We also have to think about the size of our rootstock. We also have to think about our rootstock. So this is on an MM106. So I want it, to, it's gonna be quite a small tree. It's not gonna get that big. Um, so I want it to be the kind of goblet shape. There's no point in having branches right up here that I can't reach with apples on it. I wanna be able to pick this easily. If it was an M25 tree, then I'd let it get a lot bigger. I wouldn't have branches lower down. But as it is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this and think, well, how can I make this more like a goblet tree? This central stem here is an obvious one to come out. So I'm going to saw that one out. I'm probably going to take this one as well, which is in the middle. And I reckon that would probably do this tree. It doesn't need much this year. Like I said, you've got to look on it as a couple of years project at least, you know. We're planning what to take out for the year after. Um, so we're going to start, start the branches, kind of start to form the goblet down here. So we'll take that out and that out. I always think we should be using the saw more than we should be using the secateurs when it comes to apple tree pruning. Think more about the structure than the kind of little details. This saw potentially a little bit big for this job. So. Nice clean cuts. And what we don't want to be doing is leaving kind of nubs stuck out, if you know what I mean. That's opened that tree up a lot more. And what that does, they say you should be able to chuck your hat through the middle. So I can do that. Um, although it's quite a small tree to be able to do that. You want lots of light and air getting in. This will allow more shoots to come up, more leaves to grow, uh, the fruit to be healthier. And uh, it's just the start of some really good fruit. So let's look at a few more uh, further on down here. This is just in my little coppice and I chucked some of these in. These are trees I grafted myself, did them a few years ago and put them in There's a bit of extra fruit. Um, so the next one's leaning over quite badly. Let's have a look. So this one's leaning over, and my thinking with this one is using some good old fashioned baler twine. We're gonna pull it a bit more upright this year, and probably a bit more the year after. I'm gonna tie it to that first post down low, pull it over, and then we're gonna lop off this branch that's too low to start forming the goblet. I want the goblet a bit higher up, uh, the kind of the bowl of the goblet. So I'm gonna take that branch off, but we'll tie it up first. Um, like I said, just a bit of baler twine. And what I'll do is I'll come back with a bit of rubber hose or something and put around it. It's not the warmest day. And you can tell I'm full of cold, but it's good to be outside always. So it's essential if I do something like this, I make sure I come back and um, adjust it at a later date. I don't want it strangling the tree. Bale of Twine's very good at that. I am a scout, but I ain't very good at knots. So let's do a simple reef knot, I reckon. And I should be able to manage that. And that just starts it coming back out. I don't want to put it too hard. I don't want to damage the roots. We'll leave it like that. 
Um, like I said, I'll come back and I'm going to slip some stuff in there. I've left that quite loose. Well, not loose, but there's a bit of space. So, looking at this now, let's take this branch off. That's quite a bit of a tree gone there. We'll chuck that down there for now. I'm going to take this one, this little one off as well. I think that's going to do that for this year. We don't need to be too vigorous. We'll take some of these lower ones off as well. It looks like they've, they've grown below uh, the graph. So that's a bit of the root stock coming back up, which we don't really want. So I'm quite happy with that. Hopefully, to encourage it to grow a bit more upright, next year we can jack it up a bit more and do that. I have got one that is by the house that I've used the ratchet strap on, uh, which is pretty good as well. Let's go have a look at a few more young ones. So I'm guessing this tree is probably four years old, maybe. And it's obviously a tree with some upright growth. I've got a few cider trees in. I can't remember which one this one is. It might be the Argyle Greaves, which is also known as the Upright French. Um, so the it does very much want to grow upright. So what we'll probably have to do is take some of this top growth out. We might just take make a few sweeping cuts. Maybe that one, maybe that one. It's always worth standing back, having a look at the tree, thinking where you want the shape to be, opening out that middle as much as possible. So let's take that. Put that one to start. Take that one as well. I think we'll take quite a sweeping statement. It's also some, some years, depending on how much fruit you want, worth looking at the buds. So obviously we've got um, fruiting buds. So you can see this one might be a bit of a tip bearer. It's got some big fruiting buds on the end. And then you can see the leaf buds. So what we don't want to be doing is taking off too much of the fruiting buds. Although some years, it's, trees can easily slip into biannual cropping. So sometimes it's worth kind of pruning back um, if they've cropped heavily to try and prevent that from happening, uh, from slipping into this biannual cropping. Um, I'm going to say, we'll go on to the secateur, we'll take out a bit of this, a bit of the upright stuff. Like I said, I don't want branches that I can't reach. I'm not bringing a ladder down here. And I really like the idea of having this, some apple trees down in this coppice area. They didn't cost me anything, I grafted them myself. A couple of quid for the root stock. But what it means is that, you know, I kind of hedge my bets a little bit. If the orchard doesn't crop very well, because it isn't a bit of a frost pocket there. Chances are I'm gonna get some better trees here. Uh, better apples even, or at least some apples. Uh, if someone says to me, like, why do you grow so many apple trees? How have you got so many apple trees growing? And I'm kind of like, well, you know, safety in numbers, really. Uh, on a bad year, I might have just enough. On a good year, I've got far too many. This year, you know, they were rotting on the ground. I can give them away to friends. I can feed them to animals. I can do other stuff. But on a bad year, then, I've got just enough for us. So let's have a look at the next tree. Okay, this one, again, it's starting to lean over, but I'm all right with that. I think that's fine. I'm going to take out some of these lower branches. Actually, looks like I'm going to take out that top piece. Nothing's growing very nicely. There's plenty of buds and branches that could grow from there. That is growing quite upright. So let's take that out. And although I could take that out, there's no real need to take it out this year. I'm taking enough growth off now, I think we're taking that piece. That one has some leaves on it, so I think I'll leave that one. Let's go have a look at a few further on up. 
another one leaning over. I didn't stake any of these. I literally just shoved them in the ground. It's kind of survival of the fittest a little bit. These are a bit closer to the fence. So if I wrap it around there, I'll create myself a loop that's not going to close up on the tree. Damaging the roots too much. Ugh. Ugh. About pinching my fingers behind it. Okay, that's looking a lot better already. Let's go around the other side and you can see kind of how the growth has gone because of that. You know, obviously we want it kind of upright. So can you see this was what was coming up? I was tempted almost to cut the tree off where it was and let that come as a new tree because it's above the graph point. But we'll take that off now. Don't be shy with the saw, it grows back. Remember that. I'm going to say, eventually I think I want it to, to come from here. So if I cut that off there, in the hope it creates some new growth, I might take that one off. So they're overlapping each other. So it's not ideal. Still got the wire tie on here. Yeah, because these two branches are overlapping each other. Let's remove this bottom one. Just make it healthier, a bit more open. And honestly, those two branches remove that's plenty for this tree. Could take that one. I'm gonna leave that one. Quite good over here, there's no canker or doesn't seem to be, whereas over in my orchard there's loads of canker. So maybe a bit area, a bit healthier. And we are surrounded by commercial orchards. Let's go have a look at a few more. Right, we're really getting down on now. Not many more to do over here. Again, I think this might be a cider tree. I've got them all written down somewhere. I'm quite happy with the shape of this got that kind of goblet feel to it. I'm going to take that one off on the inside. I'm going to take a few of these smaller ones. We don't want branches inside too much. That one's crossing over. Let's get rid of that. That's too high. We'll leave a few buds. Maybe um, something else will happen there. Same with there. Let's take the top of that one off as well. There we go. A bit more more of a goblet tree. Next. Okay, this one needs a bit, a bit more thinking about long term. That branch is no good to me. I think we'll take that branch off and we'll lop off a bit of the top and hope it kind of puts on a bit more growth next year. It's not done much. So let's take that one off. I don't even know what to do up there. Let's take, take that middle section out. What we don't want is like a central leader going straight up, draws all the energy of the tree. So we'll take that. Hopefully that'll put a bit of growth there. It might be too high. But we'll, we'll go with that, and see what happens next year. One more here. Again, these are very different than kind of what you get in a commercial orchard. I'm going for like ease of hand picking really um, that's what I want let's take off these lower branches I'm surrounded by a willow tree I fell but I want to move it and let's take out let's take out that let's take it out with the sector That's the start of that. I hear some dog barking and screaming over there. I wonder what the hell that was. Okay, so that's some young young trees pruned. We can do some big ones as well. I've got some that are 11 years old and I'm gonna do those next. <laughs> 